डिटेल है उस पर मैं रीजन फाइनली कोटिंग uh, करती हूँ बट वो फिनिशिंग वाली बात नहीं आती है जो शाइनिंग नहीं आती है दैट्स व्हाई आई जस्ट जॉइन दिस कोर्स परफेक्ट आई कैन सी द ब्यूटीफुल मंडाला इज एट द बैक साइड दे आर सो प्रिटी ओके कैन यू सी माय मी बिकॉज़ या आई कैन वी कैन सी या वी कैन सी नाउ फाइनली योर विजुअल again yeah, thank you, you can so see the beautiful mandalas at the back side uh, this is my latest uh, project this is my client wow. work so wow. i just want to give a finishing uh, with resin that's why i'm here wow this is so amazing and so you will be adding a resin as a new category to your business along with mandala right yep and just not only for finishing but also a new category to your business yes ma'am just only in mandala i love it Wow, this, this is so beautiful! Wow, so this I'm is just... amazing. Yeah, so the ones who are completely new <clears throat> to this resin art form, this is a perfect place for you. The ones who have some idea about what resin art is, and if they're going somewhere wrong, this is again a perfect place for you all. The ones who are, uh, you know, on their verge of starting their business or starting their own page or. can it be anything about resin art you are all at a perfect place because this class is all about resin 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 we will be teaching you from the scratch from 0% knowledge to how to really know the basics about resin because generally without knowing the basics without knowing anything about the art form that you're doing will be of no use right well what i basically believe in is um, to understand some theoretical knowledge before getting on to the practical part because if you don't understand the theory again while doing the practical uh, the uh, stuff we we might get stuck and we are like oh i didn't have any idea about this thing going wrong so it's better to have some knowledge about it before we start to work so hello everyone uh, it's just good to start we we already have 93 people um, joined in and that too on a sunday wow this is really amazing a sunday afternoon when people joining in well i could see the energy but still i if i can just get a thumbs up from everybody that yes we all are ready to go we all are ready to begin this class only then we'll just start up the class just a thumbs up from everybody so that we can directly start the class without wasting any moment any time okay sir so just few announcement that i need to make uh, with what i hand it over to ma'am uh so uh, there are some rules which we follow okay so as you all can see a lot of people are here in the class today so what we'll do is we'll just keep all cells on on mute when the class is going on if there is any question you all can go ahead one by one ask the question and mute yourself again keep your cameras on in that way ma'am will know that you guys are there and ma'am will be able to understand you guys are understanding you all can keep your camera on throughout the session and that be amazing also as you all know that like new year has just come so everyone likes surprises very sure everyone loves surprises so there is an amazing surprise one from my end and one from ma'am's end two surprises that we will be giving you at the end of the session okay so for that you have to stay till the end if you leave in the midway then you guys will be losing out on the surprise and you guys will be crying up till if later you come to know what the surprise was okay so it's an amazing two surprise you will be getting one from my end and one from ma'am and which we'll be giving at the end so yeah i won't be taking any more time over to you ma'am okay uh sayli oh, well i will try to Uh, keep myself very very uh, at a you know at a very simple uh, english form so that you get to understand because uh, you know if i take each and everything in hindi it would take a long time and we don't have that time because i know everybody has some or the other plans um, for sunday's eve so but still if you can't understand you can definitely let me know i'll explain you all the process in the end okay so if it is okay i'll begin the class and i could definitely see the energy just flooding on my chat box i have two of my devices connected this is why i keep on seeing my right side it's because i have the chats coming there so i can easily read them so this is why uh, i am looking on the other side okay yes this thank you so much for this energy which you all, which you guys are giving it to me and this is just the perfect thing to start upon the class but before just starting on the class you guys should have a bit introduction about myself the ones whom uh, you know you will be learning resin from uh, myself kunjan thakkar well i am an interior designer by profession and uh, the resin was something that i didn't really expect 
Yes, you heard me right. The resin was not something that I didn't really expect uh, sitting here teaching you all resin art. Well, I would say resin shows me as a profession. So uh, while not taking much of your time, my journey was something very unexpected. Maybe somebody would be, um, you know, the same sitting here and you never know your life would just change by just learning this amazing art form. So uh, the hobby, well, I was just crazy about this resin art. Uh, I, I was just seeing all this post uh, every now and then on Instagram, on YouTube and everywhere. So one fine day I was just uh, scrolling on Instagram and I came across a giveaway which was learning about resin art and I won that giveaway luckily and I got to learn an art form. Well, it was just about the basics but still I got to learn so much from that and the more I experimented, the more I fell in love with those uh, in this art form and today I've taught more than um, 5,000 plus students till date uh, online and offline and the students have you know trust me guys uh, we have the um, the screenshots we have the pages we have our students groups who have started their own business ventures for this for this especially this resin art form so you guys don't need to worry they were just like you all having zero percent knowledge so you guys don't need to worry you are at a perfect place okay so why are we talking so much about resin art resin art resin art but any idea what resin is now at least uh, we know this is an art form, but what is resin basically? Wow, I this is amazing. Chemical that we may have to give it a fresh and waterproof flow. Okay, I think so. The voice is cracking. If you can just type in the chat box, that would be great because I think so. The bandwidth will be separate, will be different for everybody. So in the chat box, you can just write what resin is. If anybody has any idea about resin, it is a coating. Okay. Um, anything else? Anybody, if you have any idea. Okay. So that is completely okay. If you have no idea, that is completely okay. Yes, Sheila, she has knowledge about it. So not keeping it again, more difficult for you all, keeping it very, 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 very simple. Uh, resin basically is a chemical, okay? It is not the natural, uh, it is not in the natural form that we are using, okay? It is always that we will use the resin, which will be in a processed form. Uh, in, in the natural form, you also get the resin, but it is not uh, recommended to use for your artworks, okay? So it is always necessary that you choose a good brand resin. Again, I saw some uh, somebody typing in the chat box that I could do something, but the finished product was not as desired. Okay. So again, why did this, why did this thing happen? It's because um, you always have to choose a good brand resin. It's not always that uh, you know uh, you spend a lot of money, but also don't go for very cheaper brands resin because they don't have any details mentioned on that. So resin is basically a chemical which comes along with a hardener. Okay, you can't get a resin alone. You can't say that by a fake bottle resin then I bottle hardener then No, you don't get in that way. The resin always comes with the resin bottle itself, the bigger bottle known as resin, also known as part A, and the smaller bottle known as part B, which is known as the hardener. The resin and the hardener always comes together. Okay, you never get it alone. So, as I said, this is the uh, processed resin which we are getting in the market. Yeah, there are a number of uh, resin ratios which you are getting. But uh, for now, we'll just focus that what resin and what uh, the hardener is. So, the hardener is basically a chemical again, uh, which will harden the resin. It is a kind of liquid again. So, the resin and the hardener is mixed together to get a desired outcome which you're looking for you can uh, also yes 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 yeah two liquids are mixed together to give a, a kind of a shiny look to your art surface or maybe if you're creating something new if you're adding it in the molds it, it is all perfect for that okay so now uh, again resin is something like how to choose upon which brand is good for us or not okay some basic things to be kept in mind before choosing a resin brand because if you're purchasing it online or even offline, the bottle will have all these details mentioned on the backside of the bottle. So make sure that you go through them uh, and so that you know, they have some details mentioned on that. What happens is while performing the resin art, you would get stuck at times doing the practical thing. You're like, what to do next? In that case, if there is no descriptions mentioned in the bottle, you would go wrong. Your resin will be wasted. Your artwork will be wasted and everything is just wasted. 
so the basic things to be kept in mind before purchasing a resin is so well again my resin model has a lot of detailed descriptions written here okay so we'll just get on to the first thing this says the auto bubble release so now uh, i mean why are we getting these science terms here the chemistry terms here the auto bubble release any idea this says uh, the low heat generation this says uh, once the resin is mixed uh, bubbles form okay okay yes 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 definitely so uh, whenever we know that the resin is a chemical and also the hardened is a chemical so when we are mixing two chemicals together there is the basic thing that we learned as when we were kids in science that there is an exothermic reaction which happens whenever you mix two chemicals together so which will lead to the heat generation which will lead to the auto bubble release and which will also lead to the uh, the fumes which will just uh, come off from that chemical okay chemical reaction so but there are some companies who say that there is no bubble release there is no heat generation please don't trust that brand because we know that whenever chemical is mixing these are the terms which will be there also you know what happens is in the market you just get the two bottles just simply two bottles mentioned nothing on that just trust me just the plain bottles mentioned resin and the hardener that's it and no more details mentioned in that well that is really uh, the worst thing that you can get invest in your uh, your money in such those brands just make sure that some basic points that you keep in mind okay then it says um, well okay this says that we have the crystal clear shines yes we also want the shiny gloss surface like somebody says i uh, i am making a mandala but i'm not getting that shine when i'm using a resin on that so how to uh, again you know get that perfect shine on your artwork if you are using it to seal it or only if you are creating everything out of resin just resin so how, how to get that perfect gloss in your resin artwork which will be the crystal clear shine we also want the resin to be completely uh, you know uh, fair i mean completely transparent just like the water or maybe just like the glass surface which you are using to, you know at times the resin is compared for its glass like shine so the ones who have zero percent knowledge about resin if you keep a glass surface and if you keep a resin art surface just next to each other the people will really get confused they're like this is completely glass this is not resin because they don't know what resin is but you guys know what resin is known for it's known for its gloss its shine so that when you keep it under even a sunlight the reflection will be completely perfect okay if you do all the steps properly if you're using a good brand resin so again we want that we also want that our resin art works to be completely stain proof scratch resistant so that it it is just having no harm after it is completed okay uh, with this resin also says it is highly uv resistant so that even if you're keeping your artworks uh, you know under sunlight for a longer time that is completely okay so that the resin is not again getting harmed or at times you know if you're using a cheaper brand resin if it gets exposed to sunlight it will turn yellowish in color which will just spoil the shine it will also get faded so this is why uh, there are some good brands uh yes 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 so about the brand names about the colors that we'll be using today about everything that we will be using today in the class i will be sharing it to you with all the materials list and with a good brand with uh, there are number of good brands in the market so if i say it right right now it will be difficult for you all so the ones who are already on the bit class app that is okay but the ones who don't have the bit class application please download that bit class application on your cell phones and you will be added in today's 9th january group okay in my classes section so there i will be also a part of the group so i'll be sending you the list there so it's it is much more easier for you all so to go through the list and all the names of the brands okay so then comes is uh, well resin has some do's and don'ts so uh, any idea who all can perform resin art or is it is it just a normal thing that any random person can perform this resin art okay okay so well um, there is a, a criteria uh, where like there is an age criteria which you have to fit in so the kids above 15 16 age can perform this art form the pregnant ladies the breastfeeding moms the asthmatic people and the skin conscious people please 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 take your doctor's concern before doing this art form because i don't want you guys to really harm yourself or hurt yourself by doing something that you really love okay these are some basic steps okay which i keep in mind and i also make sure that each one of my student who is doing along with me 
keeps these steps in mind because these are the tiny little steps but still uh, again this is the chemical and we don't want you know to inhale, inhale those fumes if we have any kind of uh, such uh, things going on yes uh, so uh, the, yeah this is what i'm explaining that you have you need to fall under these criteria also if you have babies and furry pets at your place make sure that they are in a separate room and not in the place where you're performing resin also make sure that uh, you know the pets will again have the furry hair like structures flowing in the area uh, in the room so which will just spoil your resin art shine they would get stuck on on your artwork also make sure that your doors and windows are completely closed uh, and you're sitting at a proper ventilated area Again, why am I focusing that the door and window should be closed? It's because the resin will be wet, right? It won't instantly dry. So the dust which will be flowing from in and out will get stuck on it, spoiling to the shine of your artwork, okay? These are some tiny little tips, but very, very important tips to be kept in mind. Make sure that you always wear the mask. The N95 for smaller artworks, again, it's okay. But when I'm performing the usual artworks, I always make sure that I wear 1M is the brand name, 1M respiratory mask which has a huge two respirators and it is a huge mask which i always wear it when i'm performing the bigger artworks make sure that you you cover your hands with the gloves the table with a plastic or newspaper beneath it's because it's very very necessary because a chemical after drying it won't really get off so it's necessary to co uh, cover your tables or the floor sorry it's it's necessary to cover your table or the floor so that so that you know it's not having any drips on that okay so now what we'll do is this was some basic thing which which needs to okay just a second which uh, needs to be kept in mind before performing this resin art okay so now uh, some this is this was some small small but very important tips to be kept in mind but um, what all on what all surfaces can you pour resin i know everybody has an answer for this each one of you has an answer for this but you can just type in the chat box um, on what all surfaces can you pour resin or you would have seen resin getting poured okay silicon wooden surfaces ceramic okay okay mdf mdf wood glass mdf silicon wood okay okay polymer clay okay so yes, MDF boards. Yes, MDF. So, okay, I know everybody has an answer for this. I knew it completely. No idea. Okay, that is okay. That is completely okay. Canvas boards, glass, glass, metal. Yes, yes. A big yes to everybody who is answering because it is completely correct. The whichever word that you are. That is completely okay. Or if you have no idea, that is completely okay. Everybody has an answer for this. Um, so why didn't, why didn't anybody say plastic? Why didn't anybody say plastic? Acrylic, yes, definitely you can pour it on your acrylic basis. So never tried. Okay. Okay. So any kinds of wood that you're using, okay. Can it be a soft wood or can it be a hard wood? it is okay to pour resin. You can pour resin on the canvas boards. You can pour resin on uh, the any kind of porous surface. The resin is a big yes to be used on. You can also pour resin on the glass surfaces, on mirror surfaces, on metal surfaces, on stone surfaces, on the ceramic surfaces. You can pour resin on anything. You can also pour it on the silicon molds. But again, you would be like, you know, uh, silicon is a kind of plastic. So why am I not uh, mentioning plastic to be used with resin? It's because, see, I am using a plastic to cover my table. So whenever I see uh, the resin, if the resin is getting on my table, uh, so these are the tiny little drips that I get. So you can easily peel it off after the resin is dried, okay? The drips which are there on the plastic, the resin will easily get be peeled off. We don't want our artworks to be in that man in such a manner that after drying from plastic base it gets peeled off right we don't want that so it's necessary to avoid plastic as a base and also why do we use silicon molds well this is the silicon mold which uh, the ones we are not familiar about a kind of uh, uh, you know silicon mold but we pour resin in this after drying the resin won't be holded in it right you can easily peel it off after it is dried so this is why you can use the silicon for your resin artworks because we just use it as a base to get the shape and then we can easily peel it off. Okay. 
so now uh, yes 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 i will get down to all these details guys just to wait uh, so now for example this is a wooden base that i have this is an mdf base okay but uh, when you whenever you pour water on this surface let's say the water you know the water we know that it will be absorbed inside it because it has pores right so it will be absorbed inside this so what we'll do is uh, we don't want the resin to be absorbed completely you know we want the resin to be equally spread in the directions so this is why what we do is we seal the pores all the time we seal the pores okay we seal all the pores to seal the pores what we do is you get the white acrylic color okay you can seal the pores with that also or you can also use a gesso it's g e w -S, s o to cover all your pores well these are the two primers which you can use any time uh, well this is again for beginner friendly like hardly 20 rupees this is a bigger bottle but 20 rupees bottle which you can definitely invest in uh, if you are a beginner so you can purchase that as a primer to seal and to cover all the pores of your artwork okay so i'm just using a random brush okay just a second i don't know why there's some kind of okay so i am just simply using the white acrylic color to cover to seal all the pores right no water just the acrylic color okay i will be sending my instagram handle names the brand names the color names the resin names everything on the bit class app guys you don't need to worry i and also i will be there in the groups so if you have any confusion you can ask me there right away the ones who are not on the bit class you just need to download the bit class application on your cell phone and there you will be automatically added the ones who have just joined in uh, you will be automatically added to today's uh, date group and also uh, you will find it in my under my class section and there is the second option known as my campus so the ones who are enjoying today's class uh, i would really uh, be hoping if you can write a small review on the campus where which will really your reviews are going to really mean a lot to me if you can just write it after the class on the campus feed right if you can do that a small review about the class about me about my class about my teaching about bit class anything that you have enjoyed that you have liked if you can write it that would be great after the class okay so this is the acrylic color that i have applied and just one coat is okay for the mdf base because the mdf has less pores as compared to the hardwood right uh, yes i am using an acrylic color this is the white acrylic color that i'm using no 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 for the silicon molds you don't need to uh, prime anything if you are using on canvas board somebody asked me the canvas is highly porous so for canvas board definitely you need to prime it but uh, you know the canvas is highly porous so for canvas board i would recommend you to coat minimum 3 three layers of this acrylic color or gesso okay so that uh, all the pores get sealed completely also uh, as this is the white acrylic color that i've used also the ones of already who are already already into this resin art form well again there is a pro tip here for you all uh, you know at times when we are working there is the resin which is just um, over and we we are left out with the hard no bottles so you can also use those hard no bottles in your artwork uh, you know as a base to prime your base um, and yes you can use the hardener as a primer but that needs to be dried for minimum 12 hours this is something which you can instantly just uh, use it after it is dried but the hardener only the hardener and just uh, paint it with the brush seal all the pores and let it dry for 12 hours and then you can use it as a, a ready base for your artwork okay yes you can do it uh, i i have already used the acrylic color as a base okay so now um, i want suggestions from everybody my base is ready should i directly start to pour resin or should i do something on the back side should i do something on the back side or should i directly start to pour resin okay cover it with okay 
Sheila has uh, the answer for it. Backside also. Okay, backside also what? Yes, Garima, definitely you can use it. Okay, to cover it backside also. No idea. Okay. Um, so again, why am I focusing more on what should be done on the backside? It's because, okay. So if you all can see this, if you all can see this, can you all see this? Yes. So how is it? If you can just see the gloss also on this artwork. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. But again, there is a but here. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, so while well, why is uh, why am I showing you this? It's because I when I was a beginner, I have made this. Yes. Uh, the, the front is completely beautiful, the front is completely amazing, but uh, when I was a beginner, well, I was the same. I was guided with like, you know, um, that you should cover the backside. But I was like, that's okay. I will be able to handle resin if it goes wrong anyway. But can you see these are the drips and this is the resin. These are the drips which I've got it on the backside. And now these are the drips, you know, which you, I can't even get rid of them because they're so hardened up. So it's very, very necessary to cover your backside and the backside yes see uh, so the for for covering the backside you would be like why are we doing so many steps before just starting the practical session it's because just imagine i'm showing you my mistake right and i really don't feel shy to show up my mistakes to any of my students it's because it is my mistake and which i have got to learn and i really don't want you guys you know to uh, if you're making something the very first product which is so close to your heart and in the end uh, you have a bad, uh, you know, a bad uh, artwork backside. So these are some tips again to be kept in mind uh, because to avoid such bad back surface of your artwork. Okay, so this is the backside of our artwork. Okay, and this is the acrylic color base. So even if you just move your fingers, this will be dried off instantly, right? So this is super, super, super good if you can. Uh, you know, if you are planning to pour something instantly, quickly, so you can use the acrylic color. But also leftover hardener, as I said, you can use it. So to seal the backside, uh, what you what what are the uh, things required? You can use a masking tape, right? A masking tape, a abro tape, and a cello tape to cover the edges of your base. Okay. Or if you you know if you are already into this art form, you can also use the rubber latex. It it is L A T E X. Okay, this is latex, so you can use it to cover the edges of your artwork. Okay, so now I'll be showing you how to use the liquid latex on your artwork, right? So I'll simply take an earbud and uh, I will take some on, on a smaller proportion. Well, after drying, it will be, you can just simply feel it off after it is dried, okay? Uh, you know, as kids, we when we used to play with fevicol, we used to apply it on our hands and uh, the weight gets peeled off the same way. <coughs> sorry the same way you are going to uh, peel it off after it is dried okay yes so to avoid the resin drips on the back side we do this we are going to get the drips that is that is going to be there that is an assurance that the resin drips will be there but how to get rid of them so why are we applying latex so the latex will have the resin drips on that and when you peel it off the also drips will get peeled off along with this so isn't it a good idea that we will get a, a clear back surface of our artworks you can also use the abro tape the masking tape or even a cello tape is okay right so i will make sure that i apply it on the uh, edges completely but if you're not sure you can also apply it on the whole back surface also. Okay. Okay. Make sure that you don't leave any gap in between. And you just apply it next to each other. And I'm simply just moving it. I've kept my base on, 
on uh, on a at a height okay so the base can you can use a glass or anything beneath but don't keep it in direct contact with the plastic or newspaper okay so well you you would be like this is already white in color but we want a clear back surface right so what we'll be doing is you don't need to worry this will turn transparent in color after it is dried okay so again it will be easier for you to peel it off Okay, so this will take hardly ten minutes to dry. I can also just simply turn it upside down. This won't fall off. So I'll simply just turn it upside down, keeping it at the uh, the latex in the edges. Okay. So now what I'll do is till this dries. we will simply start to prepare resin but to prepare resin what you need to do is you need to have a weighing scale which is very very necessary also the one who are you know who's who's a cake artist here um, you know please or the ones who are all into this bakery stuff i will recommend you guys not to use your edible molds so let's say if you if you have some chocolate molds or any kind of molds that you have at your place which you are using for your kitchen purpose please don't use it with resin once used with resin you have to use it only for resin because again it is a chemical please don't use the same kitchen molds even if you're using a kitchen weighing scale make sure that you cover it with a tissue paper a newspaper or a plastic beneath okay else if you can see well this is completely used for resin and this is the condition of my weighing scale so make sure that you keep the stuff separate for resin and also for your edible stuff right so i'm simply just using a, a plastic or a thermocol glass that you have and today uh, the resin which i will be using is 2s21 resin i will simply just wear the gloves now i won't be able to wear a mask because if i wear it you guys won't be able to understand what i'm trying to um, explain it to you okay so the ones if you are doing along with me at your place please make sure that you wear gloves and you cover your nose and mouth with the uh mask right please please don't use the powdered gloves you can also use the transparent gloves well that is okay i think so it is okay for everybody right or is it for i hope i am audible properly okay perfect okay okay perfect so if you can just check with your internet and uh, rejoin the ones who are facing any issue okay fine so i'm simply just wearing the gloves and i'll start to pour resin but before uh, as i said uh, there are different types of yes 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 you can use the plastic gloves but don't don't use the powdered gloves okay okay so what i was saying to you is please make sure that um, you uh, see and there are number of different types of resin ratios okay so you also get 2 is to 1 you also get 3 is to 1 you also get 1 is to 1 so for today what i will be using is i am using a uh, 2 is to 1 resin ratio okay so now for beginners okay keeping it very very simple for you all how to really measure resin simply simply just go blindly with what your resin bottle says okay just go blindly with what your resin bottle says So my bottle says mixing ratio two is to one. So two will be the part of the resin, and one will be the part of hardener. Okay. Again, if I want to take it in a bigger quantity, what I'll do is I will take twenty parts of resin and ten parts of the hardener. Just just that, twenty parts of resin and ten parts of the hardener. Please don't get it complicated for the ones who are completely new to resin. because uh, well this is the thing which would might really get you guys confused but don't don't get it confused keep it very simple just go with the resin ratios blindly okay don't go for like you know my base is small my base is big like you know what if the resin is left or what if the resin is running if i'm running out of resin don't don't because you already have a resin bottle just make sure that for basics you understand the res resin ratio clearly okay 
Uh, yes, just double it. So what I'm doing is two. So I'm taking 20 parts of the resin and one. So I'll take 10 parts of the hardener. That's it. So what I'll do is I'll simply just turn off, turn on the weighing scale. Please make sure that your glass weight is not calculated here. Okay. If it is there, uh, you have to add some more resin if the glass has some weight. Don't use uh, the glass, glass material glass. Don't use the acrylic bases because the resin won't get removed. Make sure that you always use the plastic or the thermocol ones or the reusable ones, the reusable silicon ones. So now I'm adding the resin, but very, very slowly. I am not in any hurry. Very, 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 very slowly. I'm taking 20. I am not at all in hurry because this, if you go wrong again in this step, this is the very first step which you are taking for resin. If you go wrong in the first step, trust me, all the next process, all the next steps, even after doing it correctly, will be completely uh, wasted for you. Okay. So I've taken 20 grams of the resin and now I'm adding 10 grams of the hardener. Again, I'm pouring it very slowly, just 10 grams. Okay, and please be very, very patient when you're adding this. Don't be in any hurry because if even if a bit of the resin ratios go wrong, your whole artwork would really, your resin won't dry, your resin will be sticky all the time. There can be multiple possibilities to go wrong. Trust me, guys. Yeah, definitely you can use paper cup. Paper cup is known as kind of thermocol cups, okay? So now if to... To the ones who are completely new in this art form, if you can see, there is a tiny layer, um, tiny two layers formed here. The bottom one, you can clearly make out there are two layers formed here. It is not mixed, right? It is the first layer, which is just floating above. So these are the two layers. The bottom one is the resin itself and the top one is the hardener, okay? So now what I'll do is, uh, these are the reusable sticks. You can also use the wooden ice cream sticks. I make sure that I use it because um, you waste a less plastic, okay? So this is the mixture which we have done. So now it's the time to mix it again. Oh, at times, you know, the people are like, Bas idna mix kariya ho gaya. No, please, please, please. So if you can see, this is a milky solution now when you start to mix it. You have to mix it for minimum two minutes. Yes, you heard me right. For minimum two minutes because... You could see, you could just make out that there are two separate layers. So for that two layers to be mixed completely properly to get a perfect solution, you have to mix it properly. Else the resin won't dry. Uh, the shine which you're looking for won't be available. Make sure that any resin or hardener, um, I'm so sorry. So that any resin or the hardener which you're getting, uh, which is there stuck on the edges or on the bottom, gets it mixed properly, okay? Yes, for first, you always have to pour the resin and then you have to add the hardener along. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I know I was not visible. Yeah. So I am mixing the resin and the hardener. Yes, you have to mix it because you could clearly see that the layer above was just floating. It wasn't even mixed even after pouring it very slowly. So you have to mix it very properly to get a proper solution. Scrape through the edges, through the edges. 15 minutes is not necessary. Just two minutes. If you do it properly, that is completely okay. Scrape through the edges, through the edges, through the bottom. Make sure that it is mixed properly, thoroughly. Right, it is mixed properly, thoroughly. Okay. So now, if you can see, my solution is mixed, but there are a lot of tiny bubbles in it, but that is okay. <laughs> Whole family is mixing for me, okay. Well, even that is great that your family is helping to you. Okay. Um, 
So now what we'll do is my solution is ready. My resin is ready here. What I'll do is I'll simply just pour this resin in two halves, okay? Because I'm making two colors. So, so now if I'm talking about colors, uh, what do you all recommend? Should we use acrylic colors or should we use the resin color itself? What, as per your opinion, everybody, if you all can really help me out, what colors can we really choose upon? Resin colors or acrylic colors? Okay, well, I really missed out some chat. Take the direction. Mein. Yes, any any direction, clockwise, anti-clockwise. This is not a cake batter, so that you have to do it in one direction. Any direction is okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so some of them are like um, resin colors. Some of them are like acrylic colors. Um, again, that is okay. The ones who are saying acrylic colors, but still, um, as a beginner, you can just try only for your first experiment. But for the second time, whenever that you are using resin, please, 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 that you make sure that you don't use the acrylic colors in the resin. It's because uh, the acrylic colors are meant only for your, some of the artworks where you directly apply it on your base. But here, when you're mixing it with resin, the color will get faded if it is not really meant for resin. So this is why you get the resin colors which are only and only used for resin, okay? So for the first type you get is the opaque color pigment. So these are the opaque color pigments, which are highly, um, you know, uh, solid colors, the perfect solid color if you are wanting to have. You, these are also highly color consistent. Um, I will show you the quantity of the color that I take, just, just a pinch of the color and uh, you can see the magic of these beautiful colors. The second is the powdered pigments. So let's say that uh, this is a powder pigment that I have. So you can simply just uh, add a pinch of the powder and it has the gloss added in it naturally. So you can uh, simply just add the powder pigments. Somebody who is running, you know, who's running, uh, it's, um, if, you are, if you have your eyeshadow palette running out of expiry date, you can also use those powder pigments in your resin to get those amazing shades. For powder pigments, any local brand is again okay, uh, but, if you're using the opaque colors, make sure that you use the resin brand colors, okay? The resin colors specifically. You can also use the alcohol inks with your art form. But again, uh, for alcohol inks, there are some colors which will react with resin and you'll get some amazing different new color. For example, if you're using an alcohol ink color, let's say just blue. Uh, when you add it in resin, it'll turn brown in color. So just make sure that you experiment it before you, uh, you know, that you pour the resin in. Make sure that you uh, add it in very less quantity and then check the color, okay? Uh, Divya, but then the recordings won't be available if you can just stay for some long time because this is a free class, so the recordings are not available. If I'm not wrong, Tisha, sorry, Torsha, if you can just check on this. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll simply just take another ice cream No, ma'am, the recordings won't be available. Uh, because okay. this is a demo class, so we won't be having the recordings of it. Yes. So I am taking a fresh ice cream stick and not using the mixed resin stick. Uh, this is the this is the color pigment from Madras Bazaar. Okay. I'll show you the color pigment that I've taken. This is a solid color. Can you see it's just a pinch of the color that I've just dipped in my screen is not not even completely filled up with color if you can see the back side if it is if it is visible the back side doesn't have any color it's just the front which has the color i'll simply just place it in the glass okay so the first is the blue color the blue opaque color that we are using okay and then is the next is the white color that i'm using okay the bottle is not really in the good condition but yes my most used color is the white okay so this is from poxy flow the resin also is from poxy flow that we are using today okay okay so it is just this pinch of the color that i'm taking okay i'll show you how beautiful shade we are getting just by taking this pinch of the color so now we'll start to mix the color 
for the powder pigments if you mix it for less time it is okay but for the solid uh, opaque colors you have to make sure that you mix it thoroughly again because what happens is i'll show you why can you see with just mixing a you know a bit you just saw i started to mix right now and i've still got this amazing shade can you just see this how amazing shade i'm i've just started to get but if you can see there is still a lot of color still left on my ice cream stick without even mixing it properly i've got this amazing shade so just imagine the color consistency if you are investing it in the colors so the bottle that i'm using is of 50 grams but uh, if you if you are a beginner and um, you you're not sure whether which color will be okay for you or not so there are so many different brands who really give you a smaller sample color bottles these days you also get the less smaller amount uh, resin bottles you also get the smaller just 5 gram color bottles so you can always invest in that if you're not sure about it can you see this beautiful shade i hope it is visible on the screen uh, the color shade which i'm just showing it to you or everything yes just this beautiful shade by using a pinch of the color make sure that you mix it properly because it is a solid color and it will take some time to get mixed okay for powder pigments they will get instantly mixed off because they are powder they are in the powder condition okay perfect so this is my blue color and this is the consistency which you have of your resin okay completely fluid in condition okay so my blue color is ready and then comes the white color i'll make sure that i mix it thoroughly thoroughly properly to get the desired shade because we don't want our shades to go wrong our shades to turn lighter in shade right the color will be there on the ice cream stick well this is the white color uh it is poxy flow but there are many different brands which are really good which you can really choose upon as a beginner to get the end result as desired okay so i'll send you as as i said above uh, earlier also uh, with all the brand names all the colors from where to get the base materials and everything that i'm using today i will send you the list of all the brand pages of all the instagram handles on the bit class okay so you just need to download the bit class application on your mobile phone when you download that you will be automatically be added to today's uh, group today's date group which is the 9th of january and there i will also be a part of that group and also uh, you can find it in under my classes area there is also a a campus named thing so if you have genuinely Uh, enjoy today's class after watching this class you can just drop in your review there on the campus regarding the bit class regarding the class or regarding anything uh, that you have really enjoyed upon and uh, your reviews will really mean a lot to us okay and also if you have any confusion regarding today's class you can ask me there in the group as well okay so this is my white color a pure white color which is ready right so now i'll take up on the base if you can see the latex which we had applied is almost dried here it's just wet on some of the areas but the other surface it's completely dried okay so while it is just going to end in few minutes so you can just watch now i'm starting the practical uh, pouring thing of the resin okay so i will start from the corners first all the time the corners first not on the center okay i will make sure that the the corners are completely filled oh uh, i have applied the white acrylic color as a base as a primer so that all the pores are sealed completely always even after pouring even after your artwork is completely done please make sure that you keep an eye on the edges it's because the resin the resin will gush towards the center 
we don't want the edges to be run out of resin right just imagine the resin after being dried uh, the edges will looking incomplete we don't want that right Oh, ma'am, we can't see your board, the MD MD board. Oh uh, well, it is just this much that you can see now. It's because yeah, I'll no. give you all a closer view later. Just let me complete this. I hope it is just visible uh, from the screen, like the normal way. Oh, uh, it is a wooden MDF base that I'm applying on. the same ways which we just primed before some time okay and uh, over the leftover place that we have i'll apply the white color that we have just prepared in okay so now what i'll do is i'll simply make some lines in between I'm taking very less resin not more okay so now what i'll do is i'll simply take a straw a normal straw okay and i'll simply just blow Right. if you feel like the white lines you have got is a bit lighter you can simply repeat it in the same way okay so just wait i'll give you all a closer look i hope everybody wants to have a closer look for this do you all want to have a closer look if yes only then i can show you all a closer look give you all a closer look okay okay so just i remove my gloves gloves because it has the resin stuck on that okay okay so just have so a closer look for you all yes 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 i was just turning it how is it everybody thank you so much everybody thank you so much but again yes we have a lot of bubbles in here if you can see just wait just wait i haven't completed yet yet just wait so uh, can you all see the tiny bubbles here so we don't want this bubbles this is really just spoiling off the shine of my artwork so this is the blow torch right so i'll simply just use it and you can see the magic of using this blow torch and to kill the bubbles this is the most important tool which can be used can you just make out the difference now the reflection of the 
light and the shine of my artwork the shine which i have now will be the same till the end even after this dries my shine won't fade off the colors won't fade off the reflection and everything will be just the same which i have now well this is the perfect thing for beginners the blow torch or a lighter you can definitely use upon i didn't use a hair dryer it's because the hair dryer has a lot of uh, pressure and this tiny little art piece won't be able to handle the pressure yes to get rid of the bubbles it is necessary to use the blow torch No, so no, no. Even after falling down, uh, even after the artwork is completed, if even if it falls down on the floor, the resin won't break. It is non-breakable. The heat gun again. The heat gun will have a lot of pressure for tiny little artworks. It is 